Funland is a creepypasta that perfectly sums up a lot of people's experiences based on their childhood. And what I mean by that is it's a story that really speaks to people who had like a really fun uh, special place they used to go to when they were a kid. No, I'm not talking about like psychology or, or somewhere in your head. I, I mean like a carnival or a park. You know, a a special fun place you used to go to as a child to just kind of get away and have some fun. Be a kid. And then you grow up and it goes away and and it it hits you on a very sentimental level. That's really the best way I can sum up the story Funland. The story starts off with someone talking about how they used to visit a place called Funland as a child. And the place that this this character describes, the narrator, the main character, it kind of sounds like C.J. Barrymore's in a way. Like it has go-karts, an arcade, batting cages, which I, I think is really cool. So yeah, this is like a really fun place, you know, and uh, from the sound of it, not just for kids, but for adults too. The character specifically goes into the details about the mini golf course. Specifically about what happens if you get a hole in one. There's like this outhouse and a dog that comes out and says a bunch of funny stuff in like a southern kind of hick accent. It's it's really funny. I won't go too much into detail about it, but I do mention, I wanted to mention the dog because it is important for later on. Now I said at the beginning of this video that you grow up and the place you used to go to for fun closes down and it hits you on a sentimental level. Well, this is what I was talking about. The story takes a bit of a depressing turn when the character goes into how it eventually closed down and it becomes abandoned and becomes very, very creepy and very scary looking. One night, the character, along with the along with their two friends, Kevin and Zach, break into the abandoned park. And at first, the character's taken over with sentimental waves of nostalgia, and it kind of hits them like a tidal wave or a bullet, and it uh, seems a little like they are distracted, which could happen to anybody. You visit a place you used to go to as a child that you have fond memories of, odds are you're going to get hit with sentimental waves of nostalgia. And I love that the writer, Darren Silvers, took some time to kind of get into that. It was handled very well. Well, at first, nothing too out of the ordinary happens. It's a little creepy, it's a little dark. You know, about as creepy as an abandoned amusement park place, fun place, would be. The main character, along with Zach and Kevin, go to the mini golf course to see what the dog that I mentioned earlier in the outhouse looks like. This is the part of the story where the tension just builds and builds, and it's so well written. I can't praise it enough. And when the dog pops out, it's both heartbreaking and pretty damn freaky. And as the moment goes on, it gets less heartbreaking and more disturbing and scary. The dog actually moves forward, which is something that that dog never did before. It wasn't it wasn't built to be able to walk on its two legs. But Zach and Kevin run away. They get out of there. The main character just kind of sits there in shock at the fact that this thing is moving. After a few demands, the animatronic dog demands once again that the character leaves. It takes a couple tries, but they finally say they finally start to run away. They're about to leave. They get to the hole that was made to get into the park. But then something happens. The character gets caught or something grabs a hold of uh, them. And they turn around to discover that the same animatronic dog has a hold of them by their jacket. And the dog says, You never should have came back. And they run away. After the incident, the main character doesn't really talk to Zack or Kevin much anymore. They never talk about the incident. They all just kind of go in different directions. It's a little heartbreaking that this incident kind of ended their friendship. But again, it's cool that the writer took some time to kind of develop that. I think it made the story much more complete. 
One day, they're driving home, and they have to take a detour, which happens to be where Funland is, the same street that they have to take the detour on. While they're driving by, the words, don't come back, appear on the windshield, and and the next thing we know, the main character gets in a car accident. When they're trying to explain everything to the cops, all they can say is the word, dog. This is a creepypasta that is very well written. There's also a sequel, Return to Funland, but I'm not planning on doing that this year. Maybe I'll do it next year. Who knows? Anyway, I cannot recommend this creepypasta enough. I think Darren Silvers did a fantastic job crafting this story, making it very scary, developing the characters. Even though we never get a name for the main character, I do like that. Because it kind of puts us, the reader, in that person's perspective. We are the main character going through this journey. A lot of creepypastas are like that. But nonetheless, this is handled so well. I can definitely not recommend this enough, guys. Check this one out. You will not regret it.